this is an area called St. Anthony, Maine. And as you can see on the outskirts, uh, this area is home to um, a lot of what would appear to be industry, but is now becoming more residential, more commercial, uh, and inhabited by a lot of different um, individuals and businesses that are using the nature areas like the Father Hennepin Bus Park. I'm going to take you on a walk here around one of the probably last protected areas here in Minneapolis. We are in the central part of the city. Uh, in the 125 year history of Minneapolis, this park actually was one of the most popular. Um, we're going to walk down here towards uh, kind of the core of where uh, this protected park um, sits. My name is Carter Christensen, uh, and this is my neighborhood, uh, St. Anthony, Maine. This neighborhood is home to a lot of different things. It's a big student community, uh, but it's also a um, heavy industry uh, community, as well as a heavy, like I said, uh, uh, young professional, um, old retirees, uh, and just a whole host of a lot of people um, calling this area home. And that is because in the 125 year history, these buildings on the outskirts of uh, this park, this protected area, um, actually were part of factories, a uh, part of Pillsbury, as this white building was, um, and a part of lots of milling, lots of other industry that set up shop along the Mississippi River which is right down there, uh, and a path to Stone Arch Bridge. This stream, the central part of the Father Hennepin Bluffs Park Protected Nature Area, um, is actually a feeder into the Mississippi River. This area has had a lot of history. It is, uh, has been used by people for about 125 years. Um, it has um, a lot of unique history. Uh, a lot of unique uses, but now it's more and more becoming a tourist attraction, especially as um, you know, as of recent in the 20th century, when the railroad tracks were taken off of the Stone Arch Bridge and replaced with a walking path. So more and more people started to discover this area. More and more people started to use the bridge um, and started to uh, come into this area. And one of the biggest issues that we are finding is. Yes, this is a protected natural area, but more so, although it's protected, you know, it's not patrolled very well by the Minneapolis Park Police. It is not patrolled very well at all by, you know, state officials that claim to obviously um, have responsibility and protect this area. Because of poor patrolling um, and because of urbanization and pollution, um, this area is in a slight bit of a crisis, uh, at least from a uh, environmental standpoint and the reason is that as more and more people move to this area we are finding more and more people are going to be using uh, our protected lands especially because this is one of the reasons why people move here and why people move to this neighborhood you can see you know we've got fire pits a uh, beautiful love story that was burnt out onto a tree with graffiti. We've got essentially a Nazi symbol that was painted onto a rock. Um, people, when they come here, they essentially feel like they are uh, without touch from authority um, you know, or anything of that nature. And the biggest thing is that we do not do enough to work to protect this land. People come here and they litter. They've got cigarette butts. They are smoking uh, and you know, flicking the butts into the river. They're drinking uh, with cans. You can see tons of cans and trash over on the other side of this park. Uh, but regardless, the biggest issue with this is that this protected area, this stream, goes out to the Mississippi River. So it is essentially uh, poisoning and polluting our waters, uh, the inhabitants of the water, and, and even so, like you saw with the graffiti um, in the fire pits, it's destroying a lot of flora and a lot of the livelihood of the plants and animals even that call this area home. It's a fun area to come down to. It's a fun area for people that choose to respect nature and that choose to respect um, our environment. 
But one of the biggest issues that we're gonna find as the city grows and as more and more people move into refurbished condos, refurbished uh, industrial areas, is we're gonna find more and more people are going to discover these places. So that's why uh, working with the Marcy Homes Neighborhood Association, uh, working with the City Parks Board, um, we need to make sure that uh, in the next vision plan moving forward into 2020, 2025, that this area is more heavily patrolled. This area is certainly more advertised and more well known, but the benefits of people not coming here to pollute, to drink, um, to clean, or, or, or um, you know, to, to throw away their trash into our rivers, into our water supply. Uh, we need to do a better job of uh, working with the city as neighbors uh, to protect why we live here. And why we live here is because we are in by far one of the most beautiful neighborhoods uh, in the Twin Cities. So that is just a brief uh, summary of the beauty of this neighborhood and the history and its 125 years, uh, but also what's going on right now and what is ever so critical about protecting, in my opinion, probably the uh, most beautiful part of our metro and of our neighborhood.